Welcome back to another brand new video, everyone. I'm sorry I haven't posted in two or three months time. Things have been pretty busy my end with my agency and my own businesses as well. But this video is gonna be an overview of how I generated $430,000 in one month, July, 2023, using the power of Google and Facebook ads. Now I'm gonna be showing you the strategies I'm using on both of these platforms. They go hand in hand extremely well together. And if you've got a half decent budget, there's no reason why you can't be trying both and making them work together now just before we do jump into it if you are struggling with google ads and want help from my agency i'll leave a link to that at the top of the description just get in touch we help all types of e-commerce businesses grow and scale their business through the power of google ads so we just jump into shopify quickly here the case study here and the business we're using is my usa business if we just change this to july uh, 2023 you can see last month we pretty much did 430k in sales now 90% 95% of these sales are from Google and Facebook ads and I'll break down my exact strategies my structure how I scale things on both of these in this video now quickly I do want to mention if you want me to go into a specific area in a dedicated video something that I might cover in this video but I don't go into too much depth with if you want a more detailed video just drop a comment down below and I can definitely do that now first we're going to dive into Google and as a lot of you are probably here for that. I'm gonna be transparent. I am spending more a day on Facebook ads at the moment, and that is mainly because they are quicker and easier to scale in a shorter period of time. But I always like to say for long-term sort of consistency, Google is definitely my preferred platform. Now, if we again change our dates here on Google to July, 2023, just so you can see the results, we're at 36K spend and an average account row as of 3.3. Break even on this business is about 1.4, 1.38, I think is the exact figure. So the first thing I want to dive into is performance max campaigns. Again, this is going to be very brief because I've got a lot to cover in this video. But you can see here, three out of the four most spent campaigns are all Pmax. The other being standard shopping, and I'll speak about that in a minute. Now, these are structured all in different ways. We've got a single product Pmax here that has got a 3.3 ROAS. This Pmax here, the highest spending one, has got four products inside of it, all in the same category. Slightly higher ticket as well. And this one at the top here has pretty much every other product in it that's all also not in standard shopping. There's about 40 odd products in this particular campaign. So you can see only nine active campaigns in the account. I don't like to have sort of any more than that because it's just unnecessary to complicate things even further. A nice, fairly simple structure, essentially remarketing two other campaigns here, which are for Australia and Canada with a brand search campaign and a search campaign as well. So that is the account structure. My performance max campaign structure is pretty straightforward. I don't do feed only like a lot of people might suggest. I have tested it. It's not really worked for me having just feed only campaigns. Having an asset group that's feed only certainly will help and does actually provide good results. But mixing that with other asset groups that are fully built out, you know, as many titles, descriptions you can have, you know, as many images you can have. If you've got videos, great, add them there as well. And simply with that, I split test and just test as many different audience signals as possible. That is the main variable I like to test within my performance max asset groups. So I might have the exact same asset group 10 times. Nothing's changed within that asset group, but the only difference is the audience signal I'm testing for each group. You just let it run and you'll eventually figure out what ones are performing better, what ones are performing worse, and you just end up turning off the poor ones and then cycling in new signals and you'll eventually find a great sweet spot where you don't really need to make any more changes, or at least that is how my approach has been this year really with Performance Max. So let's just take this campaign here, for example. This is the campaign that's higher ticket it's got four products in now i have split each of these products into their own asset groups so it's more accurate more targeted so i can use the exact product images for each individual product i have between five and ten asset groups testing different signals for each product so you can do the math you get the idea of sort of how i structure this part of performance max it's not that complicated it's a bit of work to get started and a bit of optimization to let happen you've got to allow time with pmax it's not something that's going to work overnight so please obviously bear that in mind and don't expect you know results overnight because it's not going to happen and just very quickly one more thing bid strategy is target ROAS you know maximize conversion value with target ROAS you can see here you know last 
last or July, sorry. Average target rise for this campaign, 275, 365 for this one and 300% for this PMAX campaign as well. So that's the big strategy I use. But again, it doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. Test, test, test. That is the only way you'll know for sure. Now, next up briefly, standard shopping campaigns. These are something I'm gradually bringing back into my accounts, whether that's my own businesses or my clients over at the agency as well. These are proving to be very consistent at the moment, easy to scale in terms of just daily ad spend and maintaining a good ROAS. You can see this one here, just under a three ROAS for the period of July. Very pleased with that. And it's a bit more work to maintain than PMAX because obviously you have to go in and, you know, just manage your keywords, your negative keywords, just see what's going on in there, you know, making sure you're not wasting money on complete irrelevant search terms. But other than that, for me personally, that's a once a week job. If your spend is even more than this and, you know, you're going to need to do that more frequently. And the more you do it, the less you'll have to do it in the future because you'll find in the early stages of a standard shopping campaign, there's going to be some crazy, you know, unnecessary search terms that you just want to exclude. And again, bid strategy for this. This campaign is target ROAS on the standard shopping. You can see average target I set is about 278 in July, and you can see it overachieved and almost got a three ROAS. Now, just jumping into the individual ad groups within this standard shopping campaign, the good thing with this is I've segmented my products based on category. Some of these ad groups are single products, but basically the purpose of this is that it allows me to set different target ROASes per product group, pretty much. So it's a good way to control your average target ROAS because all products are going to have, you know, they're going to have different break-even points. Some products you're going to want to get 300% some you can afford to you know like here 265 so that is essentially how I structure a standard shopping campaign and besides the regular changes with your negative keywords and stuff it's not something you want to be changing too frequently in terms of the target ROAS don't be changing this every week or every few days because it's never going to settle down it's never going to learn and it's never going to optimize and that pretty much goes for the bid strategy on any Google campaign to be honest okay and finally with Google another type of campaign is going to be other countries against standard shopping. I personally use the Simprosis Google Shopping Feed app with Shopify. It makes it extremely easy to submit your products into Google Merchant Center, but under any country you want pretty much. So I've resubmitted my product feed for Australia and Canada. You can see here, this top campaign is Australia. In July, 1.85 ROAS, just profitable, and Canada at 1.41, which is pretty much dead on break even. Obviously not the best, but these are pretty, this is the first full month I've been running these now. Now, like I said, Google takes time. It takes time to learn, it takes time to optimize. So eventually these will start to creep up, but still promising signs at the start. And again, you know, standard shopping, T row as is the bid strategy. And just because something works in one country, like your bestseller in the USA, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work in these countries. I've had to exclude some of my best performing products from the USA. They simply haven't worked out in Australia or Canada. But again, just test guys. It's the only way you're going to find out what direction to take a particular campaign campaigning you know what products are going to do well in each country etc and again just a final overview of google remarketing essential fairly small budget compared to other campaigns but it's obviously ideal to bring returning traffic back to your site brand search campaign again it's a must again extremely low budget it brings that warm traffic back to your store for example if you're running facebook ads people might then go to google search your brand name and you wanna make sure you're appearing at your top and your competitors aren't taking that space because otherwise they'll probably order from your competition. But you can see usually highest ROAS, 9.9 .9 ROAS in July with a very low ad spend and less than 10 pound cost per purchase. So it's a no brainer. And I have made a video on how to set one of these campaigns up. Pretty simple, takes about five minutes. And another thing that I'm slowly starting to introduce more is search campaigns. Again, T ROAS is the bid strategy. You can see a very solid ROAS achieved in July. I really want to scale this spend up. So that is the account structure of my USA business for Google Ads. So let's quickly jump over to Facebook. If you've got any questions, obviously drop a comment down below. Let's go see how my Facebook is doing and share a few things with you on how I run that side of things. So jumping into Facebook, if we just go over here and select, uh, where are we, 31st. This is what we're looking at. You can see 78K spent last month on Facebook, just over double Google spend, like I said at the start. It's going ridiculously well. It reminds me of 2016, 2017 Facebook ads. You can see here, obviously, the ROAS achieved. Now, some of these campaigns are obviously a bit lower than like a Google, you know, return on ad spend. But obviously, we all know Facebook tracking isn't particularly accurate. You know, you've got this campaign here at a 3.1 ROAS, and this campaign is now running at a 2.4K a day daily ad spend. So, insanely profitable. 
but let's go in and have a look at how this is structured, how I scale and what things I do to keep maintaining this level of consistency at you know a three, four K a day ad spend. So campaign structure, you can see considerably more active campaigns than Google. I like to have one product per campaign on Facebook and one country per campaign. So let's just take you know, example, we've got, I know you can't see the campaign name here, but this campaign here, one product, it's USA based. I also have the same product in this campaign, but it's Australia and same down here. Uh, if we just tick this box, this is also the exact same product, but in Canada. So I've got the same products spread across three campaigns, just simply different countries. You don't want to have one product and then within that campaign, three different countries. I mean, you can do it. It's just not the way I do it particularly. It just allows you to easily differentiate the differences because you know, each country does behave differently. Now, I'm very much heavy on CBO campaigns. The only two ABO campaigns, ad set budget campaigns, are these two here. Again, Canada and Australia, just allowing me to test products a bit sort of fairer allow me to distribute that budget evenly between products. It's just a good way to split your budget evenly because CBOs, you'll obviously find it will tend to lean towards you know one thing pretty quickly and it often just dominates most of the spend. So that is what I use ABOs for, rarely, but you know CBOs, just for me, at least for the last two years now, I've just been a consistent within my businesses. Now, key factors with Facebook to keep it running at this level. Number one, Facebook page feedback score, customer feedback score, whatever you want to call it. If you drop below a two, I believe you you get penalized which means higher cpms and i think if you drop below one you just get completely banned or that facebook page isn't allowed to run ads anymore just for a bit of context this particular business is a 3.8 feedback score floats between 3.8 and 4 it's currently 3.8 uk business at 3.7 and they haven't dropped below that for you know many months now so it's important away from facebook and just for your business excellent customer service quick responses keeping your customer base happy and the other main thing is just sell good quality products no one is going to give you good feedback if you're selling just awful products that you know are breaking within a week or they just arrive look nothing like the pictures on your website website so focus on just building a good business with good products nice packaging i know it's a bit more work and probably a bit more cost but drop shipping isn't what it is six years ago you know you need to put the effort in there's a bit more cost involved if you want to start building a brand and a proper business and that is just one way or two ways should i say of you know maintaining that facebook page feedback score because it is so essential to be nowhere near those penalizations or even get your page banned because once that happens that's it another thing is having access or being able to create content to regularly test your products on facebook now by this i mean if you run the same ad and test nothing else that ad is eventually going to die out because people have seen it over and over again the frequency is going to go high the fatigue is just going to slowly catch up with itself i guess the point here is nothing on facebook is going to last forever you need to cycle in new ads regularly and and that could be both ways that could be using the same image just different copy a slightly different angle for your product or testing new images and testing new videos and that again is one of the main reasons how i've been able to maintain this level of scale is because i'm always pumping in new content you know to advertise now luckily my manufacturer who i work with they provide excellent product images that i can test on facebook and more often than not they do well if you've got smaller products order them to your house shoot your own content is incredibly easy to do and you'll only know if something works or doesn't if you test it the ad copy itself is extremely important and just an example i have a great product image for one of my products it didn't work on facebook to my surprise and all i simply did i just changed the angle of the ad copy i basically addressed more uh, sort of pain points in my ad copy basically made people more aware of a problem that they didn't realize they have so it hit home hard and just by changing the ad copy that particular ad you know ended up scaling and it ended up being extremely profitable and at the end of the day it was the exact same picture ad it was just had a different bit of ad text ad copy above it and that is what made it perform extremely well so don't just think if an image does bad that's it test new ad copy with it and you may surprise yourself it may start yielding results for your business and another thing as well with facebook to maintain is to keep on top of the comments that people are leaving on your adverts on facebook or instagram because you are going to get people especially when you start scaling may not have even ordered from you but they just you know people like to start fires they'll create arguments they'll say nasty things and post negative comments in your advertisements and to you it might not mean anything but it will put people off purchasing 
recognition from your brand and you know these comments can range from absolutely anything so just manage and maintain the comment section of your ads you know reply to people who are polite a lot of people you'll find will comment once they've purchased your product you know they'll say they're happy with it just reply to them keep good engagement and conversations going in this comment sections it boosts the organic reach and just overall makes your business look better it just builds trust with your existing customers as well as new ones and finally with Facebook scaling you know if we go let's just pick a date in July if we go 27th of July ad spend was 3,600 pounds if we do yesterday so we, you know not even two weeks later we are at 4,300 pounds so we've gone up six seven hundred pound in ad spend in a space of you know a week or two and it is simply a case for me if a campaign is performing well I'll just increase the budget by around 20% there's no set time frame the only thing I personally would say is I don't increase a campaign's budget more than once in a three-day period you know this campaign here was on 2k budget for about a week or two two or three days ago I increased it to 2.4k it's still doing extremely well so I may up this budget you know to 2.8 or 2.9k in the next 24 hours it's really not that deep of you know making sure you're increasing budgets every three days just if it feels right and you can see the data on your screen and your business growing and your profits growing increase the budget that is all i do i keep it simple there's no need to make it as complex as some people make it do obviously this is what works for my business it might not work for yours i'm just simply showing you in this video how i'm maintaining this level of scale and it's just to give you sort of a look into the business just to show you what i'm doing at the moment and like i said if you've got any questions about any particular areas with google or facebook you want me to cover in a specific video please just leave a comment down below but other than that check out my google ads agency in the link below and i'll see you in the next video